Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? How are you blessed and highly favored? Flavored, anointed, appointed, seasoned, and ready to roar. Glory to God. Oh, God is good all the time. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. First John chapter 5. Glory to glory to glory to glory. We go from glory to glory. Hallelujah. Glory. You know, I don't know if you notice or not, but the, the White House and everything is all wired up and everything, you know. It's got security wire all around. Well, you know why? Nobody's there. <laughs> we have a ding-dong pretending president there. The world has been taken over by a corrupt regime under the authority of Satan's kingdom. They are 100% pure antichrist. Hello. That's reality. We are battling. But I can tell you that we may be outnumbered, but we're not outpowered. Amen? That's what we can never lose sight of. We might be outnumbered, but we're not outpowered. They've been waiting for this moment for generations to infiltrate as many places as they, as they have. It's too bad the church was asleep and allowed them to do it. Because they didn't understand warfare. They didn't understand spiritual warfare. They lived a wimpy life of Christ-like love, but it wasn't really true love. It was emotional. It wasn't true love. It was a hope that it was a Christ character, but it really wasn't. Because Christ wouldn't take no garbage. Amen? He took territory everywhere he went. And that was the problem for all of these years. Now, in the beginning, the apostles, man, they, they fought. They battled. But even they didn't know the true understanding of spiritual warfare like we know now. Warfare in the spirit is a life of a Christian. If warfare is not in a person's life, then they're not a Christian. It is the life of Christian. Warfare in the spirit. Amen? And it's amazing how people, the only thing they want is a blessing for themselves. They're really not interested in warfare. The only reason why they warfare is to get something. We're to be warfaring to drive out demonic presence and bring the presence of God in. We're to be warfaring to bring the kingdom on earth as Christ required it. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done. Now we got to warfare like crazy. Because it hasn't kept up. Now, because now the demonic forces have been in position. And have taken over everything. Even... Illegally taking over the seat of the president, hello, and all other, the Senate and everything else, and creating all these rules and regulations, and trying to destroy this country, and removed all the borders. So everything is open. Hundreds of thousands of people are coming in every single day, and not one of them was being tested for this fake virus. But you got to wear a mask. Not in this state, though. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. We are in a time of revolution. I'm telling you, we're, we're in a state of revolution right now. The body of Christ should be so, become so angry, holy anger, against the wickedness not against people, but against the wickedness. People have been groomed for this whole time to be in position. Years ago, I already knew what Obama was. 
And then it's not even his real name. But I knew that he was groomed as an assistant to the Antichrist and placed in a position. See, they had a plan for 16 years. They didn't expect it to end. They expected it to proceed with Jezebel, Hillary. See, these people place themselves as elite gods and goddesses, just like in the Old Testament. They actually believe they were gods and goddesses. That's why they have all of this wealth. See, they're not under the same rule as you and I. They're not even under the same insurance. Praise God, we got eternal insurance, amen? They are not human in a sense where you and I know humanity. I call them mutts, mutants. Because humanity has compassion. They don't. They won't compromise their wealth to rescue a soul. Or to do the right thing. Everything is being exposed now. And people that are not seeing it will not cross over to what's getting ready to happen. They will stay stuck there. See, we're getting ready to turn the page of a next chapter. Prophetically. We're getting ready to enter a whole nother arena. We're getting ready where God is about to release the aggressive anointing and the prosperity. And there will be a celebration to those who stood faithful. We will see the reward of the wicked and and the ones that have forsaken will see the reward. But it won't be a, the wicked. It will be a diminishing. Many people will lose their possessions. They will be dismantled. Many people are being plagued right now. God is allowing it. Because they've been turning against him so much that he's now saying, okay, I'm going to get your attention. If you're not willing to take my, get my attention through all the things that's going on, I will plague you. Many people will die. And hopefully in their last breath they will call out on Jesus. Many people will overdose. There will be death that will increase like crazy. Because God is going to allow it to happen. But it is the prayers of the saints that will rescue certain individuals and turn their hearts. Why? Because of warfare. Warfare. I remember one year, years ago, when the Lord said to me, individuals are just getting in my way. And I, and I knew in my spirit who he was talking about. Next thing I know, they were gone. Boom. Died. Next one. Died. Next one. Died. They were in his way. I wanted to do something. I didn't know what the plan was, but he said, they're now in my way. And I thought, my God, Lord. And I began to cry out to the Lord. Lord, there's got to be something good. And it was almost like the Lord was just saying, you know what, enough is enough. They're in my way. And those who were beginning to get in his way, he'll begin to take home. Hopefully they'll be in the condition to go home. But there's a time right now where you and I cannot allow doubt or fear or unbelief to reign in our lives. The only thing that you and I are allowed to have to reign in our life is called faith. Amen? The reign of faith must be so established in our life right now. And I want to talk a little bit about the reign of faith. Not the reign of doubt or fear or unbelief. It's got to be the reign of faith. Remember, faith is forever attached in the heavenlies. Amen? The reign of faith, 1 John chapter 5. 
Verse 1, is everybody okay? Praise God. In verse 1, let's speak it together. <clears throat> the reign of faith. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves him, who begot also loves him, who is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commands. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not what? Burdensome. <laughs> For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. I'm going to say it again. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Now remember, to be born again is a state of position. It is a state of being. It's where you are. It's where your heart is. It's where your thoughts are. Are you still living a born again state of being? Or you've fallen back into a safe state? Amen? See, these are associated with the chambers, the three chambers of the tabernacle. There's still too many people that have fallen from the holy place or even the most holy place to the outer court. And once they're in the outer court, that's where the enemy begins to draw them out of the outer court into outer darkness. So to be born again is a state of being. Amen? <clears throat> For, verse 4 again, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our what? Our faith. So faith, there must be a reigning of faith in your life. Faith must reign. Amen? Not fear, not doubt, not selfishness, and not you and me. Faith must reign. You know, so many times people think that faith is just asking and believing. Faith is hearing and doing. It's what? Hearing and doing. See, you've got to ask yourself, everything that you do, is this what you want me to do, Lord? Is this what you want me to do? Well, I'm going to go do this. Is this what you want me to do? Why? Because faith is what? Hearing and doing. Is this what you want? Is this where you want me to go? Is this what you want me to buy? Do you understand that? This is called faith. Why? Because now you're staying connected. He, it's, the word says acknowledge him in all of your ways and he'll establish your steps and your thoughts. So when people begin, begin to make decisions without acknowledging the Lord, that is faith, not faith. It's cut off. Does everybody get it? It's cut off. And one of the things the enemy wants to do is diminish your faith so faith doesn't reign. The next thing you know is doubt reigns. Fear reigns. Anxiety reigns. Anxiousness reigns. And people struggle with all of those things. Why? Because now it's diminishing faith from reigning. And that's the enemy's plan. That's where people get goofy, delusional, suspicious, fear of everything. I used to be that way when I was on dope. I knew they were watching me, even when they weren't. <laughs> the police might not be watching me, but the demons were. Let me, they followed me. You kidding? They ate a full course meal. They followed me wherever I went. Hallelujah. If you love God, you keep his order and you follow his lead. Listen, to follow is an act of faith. Amen? People don't understand that. To follow. Listen, when Jesus showed up, he said to the disciples, Yo, follow me. His presence caused them to activate faith. They didn't even know what faith was about. Jesus showed up, but his presence alone. Activated faith. Amen? See, so when the person's lacking presence of God, their faith is, not, is going to also be lacking. Amen? The enemy is not stupid. But the Holy Spirit is always out with the enemy. We should always be multiple steps ahead of him. Multiple. Amen? Psalm 37. Again, fear is not just asking and believing. It's hearing and doing. Psalm 
Psalm 37. Glory. Verse 1. Now he begins to talk in here about things that will try to diminish your faith. Amen? He says in verse 1, do not fret, fret. Well, that's fear, you know, whatever. Don't freak out. Why? Because of evildoers. Hello. Nor be what? Envious. These are things that diminish faith. Nor be envious of workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut off, cut, cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb. Then he says, trust in the Lord and do good. That's called faith, isn't it? Dwell in a land, and this is so powerful. It says, feed on his faithfulness. So in other words, feed on his faith. See, when there's a, that's relationship. That's face-to-face -face relationship. Why? Wow, now you're feeding on his faith. Man, when you're talking to daddy face-to-face, -face, faith is being exchanged. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faith. His faithfulness. Faithful. That's a person full of faith. Amen? See, because you will draw from him more faith. It says, delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Well, look at If you're delighting in him, you're delighting in his presence, there's a heart exchange anyways. So now your desires are his desires. Amen? It says, commit your way to the Lord, trust also in him, and he will bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord. All of this is associated with faith. And wait patiently for him. Do not freak out, fret, because of him who prospers in his way. Because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass, cease from anger and forsake wrath, do not fret. It only causes what? Harm. He just talked about all of these things that will diminish faith. You and I must see things, prepare, know, discern things that will diminish faith. Do you want to hang around with someone that's negative? That diminishes faith. <laughs> Hello? Hello? I, I, I've seen so many people being zealous out for God. And, yes, let's go. On, and then poof. it's like somebody unplugged them. Because they associated or they listened to some fake news or something else that diminished their faith. Or sometimes people get Diminished faith because I heard someone passed away or someone is sick or whatever. Oh, they let the emotion. Let me tell you, you let emotion drain you and it will diminish your faith. Amen? Don't hang around with negative people, man. That's not faith. Amen? Not at all. Oh, hallelujah. The people that grumble and complain, there is no faith there. Faith is not raining. You know what's raining? Flesh. Because they're fleshed out. They can't see things through. They can't comprehend it. Things are going to work to the good, no matter what's going on. No matter what's going to go, whether it's with me, without me, it's going to work to the good for me. Amen? It may not work to the good for somebody else that I know, but it's going to work to the good for me. Why? Because I'm going to let faith reign. Hallelujah. And we're going to feed on his faith. James 2. The reign of faith. So you got to ask yourself, every day, in every circumstance that's going on in your life, am I allowing faith to reign? Or am I allowing fear to reign? What am I allowing to reign in my life? Amen? Am I chasing after something I'm not supposed to? We shouldn't be chasing after nothing. Except for his presence. How many know God can bring everything to you? 
Not saying he doesn't send people out to do things. But everything that you're getting ready to do or do, you better ask him, Lord, is this what you want me to do? Because if you haven't, you just lost trust. And the enemy knows it. James 2, 18. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. Now, I want you to know that this word works means obedience. Amen? It means what? Obedience. Hmm. Verse 19. You believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. Hello. But do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works or faith without what? Obedience is dead. Remember, we just shared that faith is not just asking and believing. It's what? Hearing and doing. But you, do you want to know, oh, foolish man, that faith without works is dead, or faith without what? Obedience is dead. Was not Abraham our father justified by his, it was actually obedience. Amen? <laughs> when he offered Isaac, his son, on the altar, it wasn't by works, it was by what? Obedience. Verse 22, do you see that faith was working together with his works or his obedience by works faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled and says Abraham believed God, which means follow, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see then that a man is justified by obedience and not by faith only. Amen. Does everybody see that or works? Because works is done because you heard to do. Now, if you do it in works without being told to do it, it's not faith. That's where things are going to be burned. Anything that God did not tell us to do, or that we're trying to justify for a reward, will not last. It will burn when it's tested. Only the things that he says to do will last. Hallelujah. Praise God. The works is obedience. Faith without obedience is dead. Obedience is the divine order of his plan. Say it with me. Obedience is the divine order of his plan. Oh, snap. Numbers 12. And I can tell you that you will not stand in the presence of God and go, but. But, Lord. But. But. He says, make your yeses yeses. And if you're going to tell them no, you better run. <laughs> Numbers 12. Verse 6. Then the Lord said, Hear my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a what? Vision, and I speak to him in a dream. Not with my servant Moses. He is what? Faithful. In other words, full of faith. Does everybody get it? A person that's faithful is full of faith. In all my house. Now there's something spiritual about this in the area to where he wants you and I to be filled with faith in all parts of our house. All parts of our members. See, people are faithful in something, but not in everything. They can trust God in certain things, but they can't trust them in others. That's not a house full of faith. He is faithful in all my house or my temple. I speak with him face to face, even plainly, and not in dark sayings. 
For he sees the form of the Lord. Why then are you not afraid to speak against, why are you not afraid to speak against my servant? Whoa. I'd say somebody got rebuked big time. Amen. Miriam and uh, Aaron got rebuked. Again, faithful in all my house or my temple. See, this is a part where you and I are living beyond the boundaries of carnality. We're living beyond the boundaries of what? Carnality. There is no faith in carnality. Carnality trusts in only itself, emotions, and others. Hallelujah. Matthew 9. Reign of faith. Is faith truly reigning in your life? Or are you still living from the past? Matthew 9. Verse 27. Glory. Let's speak it. When Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him. They did what? Followed him. These guys were blinded and they followed him. Hallelujah. That's 28. Is everybody there? Or Matthew 27. I'm sorry. Yeah. Or 927. Amen. When Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him, crying out, saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he had come into the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus said to him, Do you believe that I am able to do this? And they said, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, let it be to you. According to your faith. And their eyes were open, and Jesus sternly warned them, saying, See that no one knows it. Of course, that didn't last long. I don't think anybody can hold back that the Lord opened their eyes to see. I mean, you know? <laughs> Hallelujah. According to your faith, not according to your tears, your circumstances, your struggles, or your trials. He doesn't move by those things. He moves according to your faith. Amen. Forever attached in the heavenlies. Glory to God. First Peter chapter 1. If faith's not reigning, things are not happening. First Peter chapter 1. You know, when God asks you to do something and you don't think you can do it, it's because you're still relying on you. I'm going to tell you that when God asks you to do something, he provides everything for it to be done. Everything. I know people right now that travel all over the world with no money. I've known people, I, I, I've known an individual who drove from California to Florida. Never stopped for gas. God sent him. He said, Lord, I ain't got no money. So I didn't, I didn't tell you about money. I said, get in the car and go. And he did. Drove from California to Florida. Never needed to stop for gas. I'm telling you, when God tells you to do something, he provides everything you need. Even the money to get whatever it is. Amen? Hallelujah. But because you said, yes, Lord, I'll do it. Everything was released now. It's when you question, gosh, Lord, I don't know how that's going to happen. Or what do you want me to do? Or where do you want me to do? Wait, wait, wait. 
then it's not released. Reasoning is the guillotine of faith. See, so many people got a calculated mind. They, they can't operate in faith. It's got to be perfectly calculated. This, 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 and this. Forget it. That ain't faith at all. Faith is not reigning. You know what's reigning? Carnal. Carnality is reigning. Believe me, when he tells you to do something, you don't have to calculate it to figure it out. You just got to be joyful like, wow, I wonder how he's going to do it. This is going to be so cool. There should be an excitement. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 1. Verse 3. Let's speak it. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now a little while, if need be, you are grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that per perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressibly and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your soul. Wow. The end of your faith. In other words, you don't need faith when you go home. Hello? You need it here. So never think, oh, I'll have it when I get home. Forget it. It's too late. If you even make it. Living, activated, Faith. Act, living hope is activated faith in the future. Amen? Living activated faith in the future is called hope. It's tested by fire of purification. God wants us to reach the quality of the genuineness of the faith so that we understand that faith must reign in our life. Nothing else. Does everybody understand it? We know he reigns, amen? But he's given us that measure of faith to keep us connected with him in everything he does. Acknowledging him in everything we do. Remember, faith without obedience is dead. Mark 9. In verse 19. Everybody there? Everybody okay? And he answered him and he said, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Then they brought him to him, an individual that was demonized. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him and threw, fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. Most people ran. Or called 911. <laughs> Hallelujah. We had that happen at a place. I forgot where it was. Somebody was having a seizure. And somebody dialed 911 and we laid hands on them and cast the deaf and dumb spirit out. You know. It should be common for me and you. Amen. 
I mean, seizures are provoked usually by, unless there's brain injury or something, there's a deaf and dumb spirit. 21. So he asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. So he inherited, didn't he? And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said, if you can believe. If you can just believe. In other words, if you, if you can raise your faith up high enough to say, yes, Lord. No matter how I feel, no matter what's going on, I'm going to obey. Remember, he asked them if they could believe. There was a request. Remember, so what this is producing something called obedience. He's saying, obey, believe. He said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, deaf and dumb spirit, hello, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly, and came out of him. And he became as one dead, so that many said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, this kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. Why? Because fasting will sometimes increase your faith. Because sometimes certain foods you're eating is messing with you. Amen? The enemy knows how to put enough Twinkies in your life to really mess up your faith. Hallelujah. If you can believe, all things are possible to him who follows or who believes. Amen? Colossians 3. The enemy likes to put foggy food in our diets. Causes people to become foggy. That's why protein is essential in our diets. Sugar is not priority in our diets. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 3. Is everybody there? Verse 1, let's speak it. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. In other words, you're focusing on things above. Everything you're doing, really, you're relating to heaven. You're relating from the future. You're living from the future to the present. Everything you're doing. Everything we do should be always affecting in the area. Is this kingdom? Is this kingdom? Is this kingdom? Am I doing, how, am I gonna, how can I help the kingdom what I'm doing? In other words, am I laboring unto the Lord or myself? If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Come on, read it with me. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life appears, then you will also appear with him. Verse 5. Therefore put to death your members, which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desires, covetousness, which is idolatry. Remember the members in the temple. He's saying put these things to death. These are desires. These are part of your temple. What's he want? He wants faith in replace of those things. He knows that these things here will diminish your faith. He said, because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. Does faith have anything to do with obedience? Yes. How about diminishing faith? Disobedience. Yeah. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming upon those, the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. 
But now you yourselves are to put off these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. In other words, he's telling us again, these are things that will diminish your faith. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Set our thoughts on God's thoughts. Amen? Ephesians 2. It doesn't mean we don't make mistakes. Amen? But don't let your mistake diminish your faith. See, so many times people allow their mistakes to diminish their faith. You know, when we make a mistake, we say, I'm learning. Amen? I'm learning. I got that one now, Lord. Thank you. <laughs> I won't do that again. You know, we sh should be praying, Lord, don't let anything diminish my faith with you. You know? Ephesians 2, 4. Let's speak it. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been what? And what is grace? His plan, right? By his plan, you've been saved. Now, to follow grace takes obedience, doesn't it? So salvation, to operate in the plan of God, takes faith. By grace, you've been saved and raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceedingly riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Here's the kicker. For by grace you have been saved through what? Faith. That not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. So, the plan of God, through the plan of God, by your obedience, you are saved. It's called faith because you obeyed the plan. Amen? It is a gift from God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. <laughs> Which God prepared beforehand that we should what? Walk in them. To walk in them is to obey them. Amen? Is everybody okay? By grace, a plan saved by faith, which is obedience. Hebrews chapter 11. The reign of faith is faith truly reigning in our lives. Hebrew 11. Verses 1 and 2. And 3. <laughs> is everybody there? Now faith is the what? Substance. Of the things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Faith here is the reality of the unseen. It is a reality to you. It makes it called faith. Why? Because you're forever attached to the heavenlies. So the things that are unseen, that are influencing you, you it's a reality to you. The unseen realm is not an imaginary thing. It's not a fake place. It is a reality to you. That is the substance that's the unseen there. Amen? Hallelujah. Verse 2, or verse 1 again. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. 
For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible or seen. Again, faith is a reality of the unseen. Ephesians 4. So in other words, it, when faith reigns, you see things others don't. Now, there's an area where God wants us all to be in the same level of faith so we can all see these things, perceive these things. And the reality of knowing that obedience is work. So works. In other words, so we all hear and we all obey. To hear and do. It's called faith. Why? Because we're connected. It's a face-to-face -face with Dad. Ephesians 4, verse 11. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and teachers, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the what? Unity of the faith. Hmm. The unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a what? Perfect man. To the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ or the fullness of the anointing. How many of y'all know the anointing doesn't work without faith? That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies. Every joint, every person is partaking in it. According to the effect of working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. If everybody was truly allowing faith to reign, everybody would be participating why? Because we'd be like-minded, like-willed, saying, yes, we need to get this done. We need to get this done. We need to get this done. Why? Because obedience is the works. Amen? In faith. There wouldn't be scatterings. There'd be gatherings. Hallelujah. 1 Timothy 4. In verse 1. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, are we in the latter times? Some will depart from the faith. In other words, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Again, their faith will be diminished. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. They will fall from attachment. In other words, forever attached in the heavenlies, they will begin to drift. That faith is diminishing. It's no longer face to face. It's long distance. Now, when the enemy sees that happening, oh, does he take advantage of it? Again, you've heard me say this before. The first spirits that begin to show up is familiar. They come with false comfort, telling you're doing good. You can just do it with Jesus and the Bible. Oh, their purpose is to separate an individual from the flock, from the presence. Everybody comes, they come up with all of these excuses to prevent from getting into God's presence to worship. Because that is required. We worship by faith. It's obedience to God. Amen. Not only do we love to do it. And we love God's presence. But it's fun. I couldn't wait to come and worship tonight. Hallelujah. My wife couldn't wait for me to come and worship tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. First Timothy chapter 6. Hallelujah. Hmm. 
verse 6. 1 Timothy 6, 6. And we're going to close here tonight. I think we got it. Did you get it? We need to search it all the time. We need to be discerning and sensitive to this. Am I allowing faith to reign? Is this what God told me to do? Oh, let's just go to, wait a minute. Did the Lord tell me, to, did the Lord tell us to do this? I hate assumption. Absolutes are by faith. Hallelujah. Verse 6. Now godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men into destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. So he's telling us this stuff is going to diminish your faith. For which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness, and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. But you, man and woman of God, flee these things. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of on eternal life, to which you are also called, and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I urge you in the sight of God, who gives life to all things, and before Christ Jesus, who witnessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate, that you keep this commandment without spot, blameless, until our Lord Jesus Christ appearing, which he will manifest in his own time. He who is the blessed and only potent and the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, dwelling in an unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see, to him be honor and glory, and everlasting power, in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Lord, we thank you for your word tonight, and we ask that you'll remind us, quicken us to the area whether we are allowing faith to reign in everything that we do. Lord, we want to hear your voice. We want to know that it's you when you speak, so that we may be obedient to your call to activate faith for your glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory in faith.